Michelle Davis and I read, write, and roller skate in Los Angeles. Welcome to this writer's life where we peek into process. Today's episode is going to talk about crafting a character. So much begins with your character, right? They're sort of like the main player in your story. They are kind of an instrument in the story and they're the center and they are who the story is happening to with and through, right? What's really cool is you can do a lot of the crafting of your character before you even begin writing. So that's with pre-writing or brainstorming, right? And that's what we're gonna do today is an activity for that. One of the ways that you get to know people is by asking them questions. So we can do the very same thing with our character and ask them questions. That means that we will shape them through the answers to those questions and then we'll have a building block and then we can go write that story with that building block already in place and kind of fleshed out. We're gonna talk about five questions that you can ask your character. The first one is, who is your character? You have some decisions to make. Are they a human? Are they an animal? How old are they? For this pre-writing activity, I'm gonna do kind of like a bubble chart, but you can do whatever you want to do. You could make a sketch of your character with arrows, you can just write notes, whatever works for you. The way I'm gonna do it is with these bubbles. So to answer the first question, who is your character. I'm gonna say that my character is a rabbit and I am picturing like an eight foot tall gentle talking rabbit. Second question you're gonna ask your character is what is their name? That's really important. So you might think of a name that you like or a name that might be meaningful to you or have something to do with the story perhaps. For me, the name of this rabbit is going to be rhubarb. It looks like a scribble, but it says rhubarb, which is a kind of vegetable. And rhubarb I'm picking because I think it's kind of quirky and I typically like to write stories that are a little bit quirky. The third question that you're gonna ask your character is what is something that they love? What does your character really like or really like to do? And for me, this rabbit named Rhubarb really loves Oreos, Oreo cookies. Those are Rhubarb's favorite thing and favorite thing to eat. You can see how we're already learning about this character. The fourth question you can ask your character is what is a personality trait that they have? Options here are also endless. You can think about the personality traits that people have. They might be confident, they might be funny, they might be talkative, they might be nervous, shy, competitive, restless, driven, relaxed, all these different qualities that a person can have. My character is is going to be daydreamy. And you can think about how qualities often have kind of two sides to them. So if rhubarb is daydreamy, then it means that rhubarb is probably creative and open to things and has ideas. But it also on the flip side might mean that rhubarb is easily distracted and might have trouble sticking to a task. And you can see how that might affect them in their story. Before I tell you the fifth question, I just also wanted to say that the options here are endless. You can later down the road or when you're inspired to ask all kinds of questions of your character. You might ask what your character eats for breakfast. What is your character's favorite music? What's their first memory? Who's someone they care about? All kinds of things to kind of flesh them out. But for our purposes, we're gonna do these five, which will give you a nice round character to begin with. So the fifth question is a little bit deeper in terms of story, and it's what is your character's goal? A character's goal is what drives the story. It keeps the action moving because they're always looking ahead to that goal and trying to get there because it's this thing they really want. For rhubarb, it's going to be a big Oreo or a giant Oreo. You can see how this might already kind of shape a story in your mind. For example, maybe Rhubarb, the daydreamer, has heard this myth about a giant Oreo. And so Rhubarb's gonna set off on a quest to find it. And they're gonna pack their knapsack full of Oreos for snacking along the way. And maybe they're gonna get distracted and that's gonna be an obstacle for them as well. I hope that this is helpful to you and that you will use these five questions to shape and craft your own character for a story that you're going to write. Please feel free to subscribe, leave a question or comment, and I hope you'll join me for future episodes of This Writer's Life. Hi, my name is Lauren Moshin. I'm a set designer based in Los Angeles. I have been doing this for about 10 years. I work in advertising, fashion, and music. Music has been one of my favorite realms to work in just because I love it. I love to sing and dance.
One of the things, well actually two things I would say, I'm going to try to keep this short. The first one is allow yourself time and space to get there. When I take on a creative project, like my old self would just, I would kind of start try to edit myself right away but I've found over the years that what's actually worked better is to just put pen to paper let it rip anything that comes to mind just get it out there sketch it out whatever write it out and then take a break and remove myself physically I'll go do yoga I'll take a walk ride my bike whatever and then I'll come back and what I found is what's happening is my mind was actually still processing those things and then I come back with a fresh set of eyes, then you begin your edit. Sometimes it's the third, the fourth, the fifth idea that's really that golden or a combination of a few ideas. You can only get there if you give yourself a massive canvas of things to start with, and then you can start to edit. And that becomes drafts in writing. And be patient with yourself and just allow yourself that space and to be okay with the process because there's something beautiful in that as well. And then the second thing I would say that's been really useful is asking yourself why you do things. You just have to take the time to sit back, ask yourself those questions. Why are you doing certain things stylistically? Because I think it helps to reaffirm what it is that you're presenting and also gives other people, you know, if they're asking those questions of you, you then you're able to answer them because people want to know about your process and why you choose to do certain things. And it's important to just reaffirm that for yourself and kind of investigate why it is you're doing certain things because there is a reason for everything. Those are my two pieces of advice and now I'm gonna peace out of here.